Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation about an audio mixer circuit that is designed as a final project for my EE421 Electronics 2 course. It's a two-channel audio mixer using BJTs and a common bass configuration. So I wanted to do a BJT circuit because I had BJTs and that was also the reason for two channels because I only had two matching potentiometers. Uh, I wanted to have something that was not overly complex to design as I have a couple other term projects that are large scale. And lastly, good output performance was something that I wanted as well. Not too much distortion. Um, so with this initial circuit that I developed, it was a little too distorted. There was a little bit of offset in terms of the output. So even though it, was, it worked and it was fine enough, I decided to do a little bit more research and see what else I could find. Uh, and I came across a schematic of a common base configuration amplifier, which I saw was very good output characteristics from what was described. And so I decided to try and draft one up. And it turns out that it did have pretty good output characteristics that I was looking for, because it's a little bit more involved of a circuit, but still not too complex. Essentially, the uh, current gain is essentially unity. That's that one here, because the input the collector current is essentially the same as the emitter current and so the voltage amplitude is scaled based off of the resistor um, the ratio of the resistors so here r1 is the collector resistor and the emitter resistor would be any of these input channels and with the potentiometer here as uh, seen in r5 and r6 in the diagram those are variable, which would allow the adjustment of the different channels to have different um, amplitudes and input characteristics on how they translate to the output. So also, of course, some uh, coupling capacitors are used to make sure there's no DC, um, all of the DC signals are eliminated and all that noise has gone away. So after connecting, uh, it worked much as I was expecting and much as I'd hoped. There was a little bit of distortion, but not too much and a little bit of clipping as well. And uh, But other than that, the signal performed exactly as I was hoping. And you can see a two kilohertz uh, signal stacked on top of the 30 hertz. And you can very clearly see that there's the 30 hertz one, this triangular large wave, and then all of the little jitter, essentially. It's not jitter, it's the very high frequency wave stacked on top. So let's jump over to simulation. This way we can enter full screen. So here we started seeing with the 60 hertz and 30 hertz waves stacked on top of each other. And you see me here adjusting the potentiometers, essentially getting rid of one and adding the other. So this combo of 30 and 60 hertz provides a little bit more of a you know, sawtooth style. But as I increase that 60 hertz channel, you see that second peak show up very clearly. Now with the, uh, the harmonic of 90 you can see there's that double double u-shaped wave and the stack on both of the input waves together and again a little bit of adjustment in the potentiometers so you can see uh, different characteristics in the output another fun one the square wave stacked on top of the sine wave also clearly visible in the output just gonna skip ahead a little bit but you can see a couple other examples that I simulated different adjustment of the potentiometers, uh, increases or decreases the amplitude of each of the input signals, but still providing a clear output with not very much clipping as long as it was within an appropriate range and good characteristics, not too much distortion. So after that was all well set up and verified that it was functioning as I would hoped, uh, the components list was finalized, so we had the three BJTs, a couple of the potentiometers for the two input channels, uh, the coupling capacitors needed for each of the sections, as well as some resistors helping direct the current, wires of course, and the simulation and measurement tools needed for the simulation and measurement. Now the real circuit, there was a couple snags. One of them was that I couldn't open two function generators in the MX Elvis suite of virtual instruments at the same time. So I ended up having to create a predefined um, series of waveforms in the arbitrary waveform generator. And um, that produced 
these different testing input signals that I showed here. So make sure that the input signals were what I was hoping them to be before moving to the actual connection and making sure that it worked as appropriate. And um, here's the circuit configuration fully realized on the board. A little close up of the transistors. And I'm going to jump over to YouTube again so we can see that in action. And you see, just like the simulation, the waveforms are stacked when, by adjusting the potentiometers. Oh, I clipped out a little bit, a little bit too high of amplitude. But the 60 hertz is more, 60 hertz is less. And you can see that there's those individual waveforms both stacked on top of each other and was functioning as appropriate. And now you see that W waveform, which is the 90 hertz. And essentially, I tried to test all of the same waveforms that I had simulated previously in the programmed waveform patterns that I did in the arbitrary waveform generator. And you can see square waveform stacked nicely on top of the, of the sine wave. And this is a little muddy. That has to do with the triangle wave and the resolution that I'll discuss in just a second. But essentially it's still working. Both waveforms are, depending on their input settings, uh, stacked on top of each other, producing that um, that combined waveform output, which is exactly as we had hoped and had simulated. So with that, some of the uh, lessons learned were that, um, oops, no, I'll just watch that. So the um, this, the circuit behaved almost identically to the simulated one, which proved that the theory and the design held up well. Um, as I mentioned, the triangle waveform had a little bit of trouble in the real circuit because uh, essentially because I programmed that different waveforms and periods throughout the uh, input channels, I had reached the maximum number of sampled values, which meant that there was a little bit of stair stepper and jittery appearing input, but um, but the waveform overall performed as expected. Um, and again, a couple sections where the amplitude was too large for the circuit configuration, and so there was a little bit of clipping, but um, no distortion. And I had a couple references from the book and as well as some online resources. But other than that, that's the circuit. Thanks for watching, and I hope you liked it.